somebody would just give you a little bit and you'd be like, oh, cool, I have a little energy now. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to our channel. Stevie Nicks overcame her cocaine addiction with her brand of witchcraft. We'll take a look at how Stevie Nicks says she saved herself from drug addiction. I survived by myself. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. So for me, I don't like to stop. So it's easier not to start than to have to stop. Number five, a biography of her life. The 73-year-old Fleetwood Mac singer discussed the potential of biography or film about her life in an interview with Tim McGraw for his Apple Music Beyond the Influence radio show. She has contemplated it, but she doesn't want it to become solely about her addiction. Nix told McGraw that she's thinking of writing a really fun book, detailing the events from her youth to the present, including band adventures and hilarious encounters with celebrities like Prince. What I wouldn't put in it, she said, I would very gracefully go over the drugs, because I don't feel that they defined my life. This much money on this stupid drug, this is crazy. This could have, you know, Two weeks, worth, two weeks worth of cocaine could have paid our rent for six months. Number four, she pushed herself. I managed to save myself, she said, referring to her early 40s time at the Betty Ford Center when she overcame her cocaine addiction. I got through some pretty scary moments, but I saved me. Nobody else saved me. I survived. I survived my cocaine. I survived it myself. Nix made it obvious that she was the one who pushed for her therapy. I checked myself into rehab, she said. Nobody did that for me. I did it, and that's like with my whole life. So I would dance over those parts, just to give the wisdom out to people. But mostly, I would just tell all these really fun, funny stories, because those things I would love to share. Nick stated that it would most likely be a four-part book, and that if she was satisfied with the final result, she might consider making a biopic. Number three, the band used to consume cocaine before, after, or during their gigs. Her legendary band, with whom she still performs, was notorious for their drug usage. Bottle caps were loaded with cocaine and used by the musicians before, during, and after concerts, according to many biographies. They'd be left on the stage, on the roofs of amplifiers, or in a tent off to the side. All of us were drug addicts, but there was a point where I was the worst drug addict, Nix told Rolling Stone in 2015. I was a girl, I was fragile, and I was doing a lot of coke and I had that hole in my nose. Referring to a self-medication misstep where she treated her migraines with a solution of aspirin and water that she squirted up her nose. So it was dangerous. It's really fun and we've always loved it and we, we are prepared to spend the money that it takes to travel like that because we simply enjoy it. Number two, her addiction deteriorated as the band's success rose. In 2006, she informed ABC News that she had spent millions on the medication. She began using cocaine in 1973, and her addiction worsened as the band's popularity grew. She came to an abrupt halt after a plastic surgeon informed her, you're going to have a lot of problems with your nose if you don't stop doing this. I went to a plastic surgeon, and he looked in my nose and said, you have a really big hole in your nose, and it's very dangerous. Realizing the problems with her nose could affect my voice. And then what would I do if I couldn't sing anymore? I could not get to Betty Ford fast enough. When I walked out of Betty Ford after beating Coke, she told Rolling Stone in 2017, I spent two months doing so well, but all my business managers and everyone were urging me to go to this guy who was supposedly the darling of the psychiatrists. That was the guy who put me on clonopin. This is the man who made me go from 123 pounds to almost 170 pounds at 5 feet 2. He stole 8 years of my life. In 1993, she went back to rehab to get help for her clonopin addiction look beautiful you looked high and unattractive so unattractive so this is not a good part of what I remember about this whole thing number one Nix is no longer on any drugs Nix is now drug free except for marijuana when she's creating music she utilizes cannabis which is legal in California according to the same site it's my one little thing that I can do if I'm sitting at the piano and I'm writing, then I'm not out driving around in a car. Nobody is here. Nobody sees me. I am not smoking with anybody. It's just me and it's my choice. I use it as a tool and I'm very careful, you know, and I get results. However, if I thought it was going to lead me back to something worse, I'd stop. This brings us to the end of our video. 
Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, then do let us know by smashing that like button. Well, we will see you soon in another video. Until then, take care and goodbye.